It's five o'clock in the morning at Godspeed Hollow Farm, southwest of Portland, Oregon. Sarah King's cows, Milan and Elsa, are ready to be milked. Sarah's dairy is small, but it keeps her busy and she has a waiting list of 50 customers for her milk. So our farm operates under the premise of biodynamic or holistic management practices. So we're really all about incorporating both the environment and its elements into the way that we manage the day-to-day -day operations of the farm. What we're doing here is the exact same thing that humans have been doing for hundreds and thousands of years on small farms. But the economics of Godspeed Hollow Farm may no longer be sustainable because the Oregon government wants to treat this little dairy like it's a large dairy. What I have to do is uh, electrical drainage, plumbing work, install septic, the list is endless. And all told, you know, we could be $15,000, but depending on the level of requirement they have, it's going to be $100,000 or more. Last year, the Oregon Department of Agriculture reinterpreted its regulations regarding CAFOs, confined animal feeding operations. Typically, CAFOs house hundreds or thousands of animals. Because they generate tons of manure and thousands of gallons of wastewater, the government requires them to maintain infrastructure to prevent environmental damage. Now, the government is trying to apply these same infrastructure regulations to Sarah's three-cow, environmentally sustainable dairy farm. My customers think that it's ludicrous. They like how we operate. They want us to continue to operate at the size and scale and in the format we do today. And they don't think that there's any reason I should be being compared to a larger scale operation and have to change everything we're doing just to comply with a regulation that doesn't make sense. Sarah's cows rotate through pastures, which allows them to continually eat fresh grass. Once they rotate to a new plot, their manure nourishes the previous one so that the grass can regrow and the cycle can begin anew. Our animals have access to the outdoors all the time, but when it's gross and raining like it is today, they also have free access at any moment to the barn where they can enjoy breakfast, they can sleep, um, they can hang out if they want to, but that's only at their discretion. They can absolutely go back outside and be on the pasture at any point that they want to. For years, the Department of Agriculture did not apply its rules for CAFOs to farms like Sarah's. So why did the agency change its tune? Protectionism. According to its own communications, it received concerns from the Oregon dairy industry that small dairies were operating without CAFO permits. The agency further stated that the small dairies enjoyed an unfair competitive advantage by not being subject to the requirements. I'm frustrated by this requirement on us because we're not big. We don't want to be big. It's not who we are. And it's not the customer base that we're serving. And I'm flattered if they think that we have a competitive advantage with my three Disney princess cows over here, but we're not competition. Sarah's friend, Christine Anderson, is the one who introduced her to sustainable dairy farming. As a small farmer, I feel like it's my duty to help encourage other small farms, and I don't see a sustainable way for other small dairy farms to be able to continue to exist if we're gonna put these regulations on them. Small dairy farms like Christine's and Sarah's only produce about five gallons of water per day. It's ridiculous Oregon thinks that small amount of water could harm the environment and wants Sarah and Christine to build expensive machinery to mitigate an issue that doesn't exist on their farms. Altogether, we produce approximately six gallons worth of wastewater usually ends up on the driveway, but I've also used it to irrigate my vegetable garden, which is totally the family garden that we eat from every day. The government cannot wrap small dairies in needless red tape to please big dairies. So Sarah, Christine, and two Oregon small goat dairies are suing the Department of Agriculture with the Institute for Justice. I operate a small farm and I should not be regulated as if I have 10,000 cows when I'm only milking two. 
This lawsuit isn't just about me or my farm or small farmers in Oregon. It's about the right for anybody to earn an honest living. Sarah and Christine are determined to keep farming because it's their passion and they want others to have the same freedom.